Hi, what's up people? This is Sifurian, and right now we're going to be jumping into episode 9 of The Last Kingdom, the final season, and we are edging closer to the end. Oh, man, um, but yeah, last time, Edward, Edward's being a bit of a stubborn prick, let's really be honest. Um, everyone is kind of going against him, everyone is siding with Uhtred, and, and, Edward seems to like he wants to resolve this problem peacefully. What I get, I, I actually kind of like admire that. But the way he's doing it, it's not right, man. Uhtred's got the best plan and everyone is siding with Uhtred. And I mean everybody. Even Auschwitz. was kind of, was kind of crazy when you think about Auschwitz, you know, siding with Uhtred. But Uhtred does have the best plan. But Edward's just... I don't know, like, I, I was saying this not that long ago in, in a, like, a different episode, that Edward always seems like he's very hesitant to go into battle, like, almost like he's scared, and, and, like I said, I, I kind of, like, admire that, I think it's a good trait of a king to try and resolve things peacefully, but at some point you have to act, at some point you have to, you know, do what's necessary, and and just the way that he wants to do it by splitting up the kingdom and pretty much turn his back on, on, on his father's dream and vision, it's... No, nah, man. But the episode ended with Uhtred giving him a choice. Like, look, choose. Are you with me or, or what? Because me and my forces, we're going to go and we leave him by, sun, by, by sunrise and everything. Uh, even, even the army of Mercia are behind Uhtred. I really hope Edward, <laughs> you know, rethinks this. I don't know, maybe his new wife will, will kind of take him aside and actually reason with him. Maybe Elswith will, will sit with him and talk to him. Because I'm trying to think, like, who else could actually get through to him. But like, maybe we'll get, like, a scene where Uhtred and, and Edward will sit down and talk face-to-face, -face, like Uhtred and Alfred back in the day, how they used to, like, have their little back and forth. But Edward, I... I <sighs> I don't know, it's... Hmm. I'm just so intrigued to see how this is going to play out, man. Because you've got Etherhelm. Um, he's aligned himself with the Scots and he's manipulating the situation there. And and as far as, like, King Constantine, like, I'm very intrigued with him. He doesn't seem like... Like a fool. I think he's intrigued in this situation. But... I don't know. There, there might actually be more to him than just... Yeah, I'm a king. I need to protect my people. Let's go to war. I think there might be more to him. I think he doesn't trust Etherhelm. And I'm kind of hoping it's, it's, it's like Edward and Constantine will come face to face. And Constantine will be like, all right, Edward. So what's the problem? Okay. You want him? Okay, you can have him. You know, <laughs> like kind of resolve things actually peacefully. I mean, Constantine is only defending his land. He's defending his people. So there is going to be that natural worry. Like, is Edward really com like coming to take over? But at the same time, I don't think he believes everything Atherhelm is feeding him. You know, so I'm kind of hoping that there's more to him. You know, um, but yeah, just I can't believe we're coming to the end of this show, man. Hopefully, we're not going to lose anyone in this episode. But with the way that this season has been, guaranteed we're going to lose someone. And if not, it's going to happen in the finale. And I hope it's not someone like some of our main, main characters. No more. <laughs> we can't lose any more characters. But yeah, we're going to get into this. If you are interested in watching the finale, it should be up on my Patreon right now, including the movie. Right? If I've not done the edited down version of, of the movie, what I am going to be doing... Um, the full length will definitely be up because hopefully I'm going to try and film that as soon as it drops. Um, but yeah, episode 9, season 5. <sighs> Let's do this, man. Another person who cannot sleep. I am not in the king's favour tonight. I told him he should not turn his back on Northumbria and he was not wow. pleased. No man enjoys hearing the truth. From the woman he loves. Everyone is against him on this. Are they both going to go and talk to him? Because who else is he really going to listen to? Edward, Come on. Do not turn on other Saxons. Now is not the time to become allies. We are not allies. Merely the women who love you. I swear I will say the truth. As I see it, your plan to forsake Aelfwyn and make a bargain with the Scots is not without merit. It could 
bring peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, but at the cost of dividing the Saxons. Do not risk sundering Mercia from Wessex. You should be advising Lord Aldhelm. But I shall not, for I agree with Lord Aldhelm. Ethelfled would follow Utrecht. I am the king. I do not follow. He's so fucking stubborn, like I said. Stubborn little prick. You are a king who is choosing not to lead. A choice so strange. I ask myself why. And I only have one conclusion. Fear. I do not fear Ethelhelm Constantine. No, no but you fear Alfred and his legacy. Oh, okay. So I will tell you one thing. You are strong enough to be the man to fulfill your father's dream. You are worthy to live in the Chronicles as the one who unified England. It is not fear that holds me back. I am your mother, and I know when you are afraid. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? You are as good and true and faithful a man as your father, and for that, God will favor you. I was just saying at the start that like he always seems hesitant and scared to get, like go in the battle. This is your destiny. Seize this moment. He was just scared of living up to his father. That's all. It really makes sense. Wessex have stood down. Edward's men no longer defend these walls. See, everyone's going, man. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh. Come on. Be ready to go to war. Right out. To Bevanbur then, Lord Utrecht. <laughs> Our Swift come through, man. Oh, we need someone loyal to hold the borderlands in Northumbria. Yep. <laughs> We confront the Scottish king on the road. We break his alliance with Lord Ethelhelm and make a bargain for Ethelfled's daughter. We retain Northumbria for the Saxon people. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck, this show is so good, man. <laughs> Oh my god, man. Getting all teary-eyed and shit. Five seasons of building up to this. But of course he's not going to get Bibbenburg back in this episode. I, I think that would be the finale. And then probably dealing with the fallout of that will be the movie. Like they said, that um, Uhtred will be that first line of defence against the Scots. Maybe that's the movie. As soon as Constantine's army arrives and the marriage is consummated, we will be on our way with our supplies. When do they arrive? This army. Soon. But there's a big part of me that they kept the uncle and that they didn't introduce him. That's why we will not be leaving these walls, whatever promises we have made, whatever lies. Because I just think his uncle would have been more of a threat. No. Constantine's men preparing a boat near his port at Dinbar. One boat will not transport an army. Could be an advanced gut sailing with Constantine himself. Constantine is a great king. He will not arrive into a fortress by the sea gate like a traitor. This endeavor is a show of strength. He will lead as many men on the road as he can gather. I agree. It is unlikely he will arrive south by sea. All right, we stay with the plan. With luck, his full army will take days together. Onward. Mm, okay. I'll tell you what, though, Cetric looks like he's been beefing out a bit, doesn't he? Jesus. <laughs> I don't think I've noticed it until now. That was some cool shot with the sun going down and shit. Oh, okay, so he has come by, see. I cannot choose a final ship. Except for perhaps this one. 
My men disembark at the Seagate. A king arrives at our fortress to the front. <laughs> okay, so he's shown he's a little bit unpredictable. Lord King, you are a little in advance of what we had planned. Well, I like to catch people off guard. <laughs> I was hoping your arrival would be a little more clandestine. You would not become a king to hide in a forest. Was that a boy to be king of the Saxons? Indeed. Elfwit. Come and bow to King Constantine. A word of advice from a king to a future king. Trust no one who advises you. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Ask Lady Elfwin to join us. Yeah. He doesn't trust Atherholm at all, does he? Never meet a bride on an empty stomach. <laughs> I don't blame him. It's like, like you turned on your king and now you're trying to side with me. Oh, come on. They want to join you. This is what they've been waiting for. They'll tell stories of us their whole lives, Babenbar. My part in its conquest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at his arms, Jesus Christ! If we had got to Constantine, then it would be a negotiation. But now we give him nothing to lose. We have hundreds of men. Babenbar is well defended, yes, but we will surely outman them. His own daughter died amidst the fury of his scheming. We cannot risk Ethelfled's child in the chaos that will engulf Babenbar. There is another way. I will leave with some of my men. Wait until you have word from us. We shall get Delphin out of the fortress, then you can attack. Shulik, are you strong enough to join us? Are you strong enough to stop me? <laughs> if it works, we will return with Elfwin. If it does not, then this will be the last time we speak together. Oh, because okay, so this episode is them sneaking in, and final episode will be the battle and then the, the, the fallout. We will seek the help of someone I know. What if help is not forthcoming? Then Finnan will have to think of something. What? <laughs> oh, man. Is this healed? Because we've not seen her in a while. It would make sense with the finale kind of coming up to bring her back in. If you had written, we would have brewed some ale. You are here. <laughs> you are lucky. Been on the island most of the month. I come for Bermanba. Is it the time? Have you the men? That would has an army south of here. Hmm. First, they must get into the fortress with a small number of men to secure the Lady Elfwyn. Oh. Have you a plan? One is forming, yes, but I will need help. Not yours. I will need the help. No. No. He's too young. Not his help. No, not his at all. By any piece of luck, the traitor Heston's still in these lands. Heston? Uhtred, truly the gods are with you. Come. Who's too young? Is it the, the kid that was hidden? Maybe? Steal from me and you'll regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I am to enter Bebenba, and you are to help me by distracting the household guard. What? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Will Valhalla welcome a man who sells relics to fools? <clears throat> my ancestors came to these lands to become rich, Uhtred. I'm merely leaving my birthright. You will not even need to wield your sword. All I ask is that you draw the guard to the shore, and for that I will pay you handsomely. I'm not known for my loyalty, Uhtred. It is not wise to put this in my hands. It will cost you. Yes, I know. Finan is outside. He will explain the plan. It's good to have him back. I like Heston. <laughs> Never certain Heston can be trusted. Am I making the right choice? It cannot be wrong to protect the Lady Elfin, or to seek a home for your children. Whether this is the time that has been chosen for you, that I cannot say. I hope it is. But your motive is pure. And so my God will be with you. Get it done as dawn rises. And tomorrow will be the first day of a new world. Yeah. 
Hilda's always been there for like the little like prep talks to get him focused. <laughs> Do it for him. He draws the guards down to the beach just before the tide turns, giving you a very small and frankly slightly reckless opportunity to get in by the guards room before they return. Forgetting the bit where you sit on your ass. I, I sit on my ass in the boat. Mm. Get them out when the signal comes. Excellent. We're all agreed. She's gonna go with them, because she don't trust him. Mm. Edward is lost. To be so enraged by Ethelhelm's treachery, he would risk his own son in a siege. Something has gripped him, just as if he now believes he has divine blessing. I may have been too emphatic in my encouragement. <laughs> just a little bit. Who is it that you're fond of? I'm sorry? Why has your heart has fostered so much resentment? I will not share the content of my heart. Well, um, as we, we will be married, I feel I should offer you my trust. I am a man. A woman has married herself. <laughs> yes, she is mine. And I have no wish to betray her by hunting a girl of noble blood. So, you will be my wife. You will live in comfort in which ever fortress best pleases you. I shall enjoy the riches of your land in Massio and may visit your chamber. Wow, sure. okay. The marriage will be barren, and I will never love you. See, I said it at the start, there's more to him. That is the first time someone has been honest with me for quite a while. Wow, okay. I, I really hope that like, when push comes to shove, he's not going to want to go to war with Edward. I just hope that this, Oh, come on, man. Because I actually like Constantine. He seems like a... Mm, okay. <laughs> this shore is the land of Whitgar of Vivenberg. We do not seek to trespass, only to wait for our cargo and salvage it. Who travels with you, Nan? A trader bringing relics to Lindisfarne. Name yourself. Hested, allow us to wait for the tide, and you can have some spoils. Wait here. Linda's farm. Wasn't that, um... It rings a bell. Vikings, weren't it? Ragnar raided it in season one, only because I, like, the only reason why I know it off the top of my head because I was only watching season one just the other week. <laughs> Lord King... We have extended much hospitality to you and Lord Ethelhelm. Allow me to claim the spoils as recompense. What's the cargo? Salt and relics. When the tide comes in, more may follow. Danes send men to observe in the weeks before they attack. Once we have departed south, we may be at the mercy of sea raiders. Then you'll seek to welcome us. I think he's smart, man. See, this wit guard don't seem like much. That's why I I wish the, the, the uncle had not been written out the show because his uncle would have been a bit more wiser and a bit more cautious. It would have been a better challenge for Uhtred to overthrow. You know what I mean? Heston. Now that is a face I would not forget. Are you the poor soul that was shipwrecked? Do not recall you? No. No, it seems you do not. <laughs> the last time we met, you imprisoned me in Alfred's tomb. Oh, shit. We were both younger men. My grandson barely slept. I have removed the icicles from my balls and will be on my way. <sighs> Stay a while, Heston. We have such memories to share. 
Oh, shit. Citric dove into that barrel without even looking to see what was in it. <laughs> Come on, that's one dad for. What came wait so much for signal? We have waited and heard nothing. The time off has prevailed, it's slipping away. This is madness. Yes. We must follow. Yeah. It's like how many people are gonna die now? because of Utri, I mean, Edward just um, rushing in. How many people are gonna die? But then it might work out because it's a like distraction, because if they get caught, they, they might need a distraction to... Mm. Why does Constantine place his men here? We do not discuss what measures we take to ensure my lord is protected. All right. <clears throat> King Constantine, your man strays where he is not wanted. He's no man of mine. Shit. I was just saying, weren't I, that Edward is going to be a distraction. <laughs> oh, he's that close, man. But I don't think Udrid would be that sneaky to kind of come up behind him and stick him. You know what I mean? He he would want to like face him face to face and do it with honor. Lady Elfwin? Yeah. Come. No. Come! I'm trying to rescue you. No, Lady Elfwin. I am Lord Heston. I was a friend of your true father. Lord Heston. Tried to kill my mother. Oh my god, Heston. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> You're a liar. Your plot is discovered and your other men captured. Tell me the truth of why you came to Bibbenbell and I shall take only their lives. I will tell you the truth. For I serve no one but myself. I have no allies here. And I'm part of no plan. Are you kidding me? Bring him back into the show just to kid him off. And strangely enough, the one time that he's actually loyal and trustworthy, it gets him killed. Because weirdly, like, if... if if he had just said, oh, oh no, I'm like a part of a plan, da da da, they, could, they probably could have kept him alive, but wow. So that's Heston dead. We know you are here. We have seen your scouts. Lady Elsewhere. What? Hold on, is Elswith trying to get Stora and like the rest of them, like the rest of the Danes to help take back Bevanbur? We need your help. Are you kidding me? It's her land as well, really, if you think about it. Let me strike the first blow. My lord, soldiers approach from the south. How many? Many. There's a distraction. What was I saying? Oh my god. <laughs> Give us Lord Ethelhelm and Lady Elfwyn, and we will not attack. Refuse, and we will besiege and kill you all. None will survive. Come on, next episode. <laughs> this show is so good. Oh my, okay. I can't believe they killed off Heston. Brought him back into the show just to kill him off. And like I said, like strangely, the one time that he's genuinely loyal and it gets him killed. 
I was just saying that I actually really like Hessman. He's always been that, like, friend, enemy, you know, frenemy. You know what I mean? He's always kind of been, like, in, in there where he's always looked out for himself. So he would align himself with Uhtred if he could benefit from it. But it's just... Oh, that really sucks, man. But here we are now. The finale. Final episode. And like I said earlier, I, I think in this episode... Well... The final episode is going to be Uhtred taking back Bevenberg, killing his cousin, what should have been his uncle, let's be honest, but killing his cousin, taking back Bevenberg, and then the fallout of that, maybe with King Constantine and stuff, um, that's going to set up the movie. But I'm just trying to think, like, how would Uhtred's daughter fit into that? How would Stora and the rest of the Danes fit into the movie? Because I think Stora would want to help her father take back their homeland of Bebenburg. But at the same time, I think she still holds a grudge against Edward. So going into the movie, the Danes could be a problem. I just I don't know, man. Alswith coming through, convincing Edward to uh, actually join forces and, 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 and choose the right path. And like everything she said about um, Edward being scared and, and afraid... I've said that a few times now that Edward seems scared and hesitant to get into battle. Not because, like, obviously now we know that it's not because he's scared to go to war. It's because he's scared that he'll never live up to his father's memory and, and the, the, like his father's legacy and stuff. What makes so much more sense now, like when you look back on a lot of the choices that Edward has made. Oh, the writing in this show is so good, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that she came through. It looks like she's also come through as well with getting Danes to help. What I thought would never happen, like she's gone off to get Danes to help her son. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I really hope Hild is going to be okay. I really hope she ain't the, like, the next one to like, be took out of the show. But the talk, like when she was talking to Uhtred about how like there was someone who was like too young... That's Uhtred's hidden son, right? Because there's been talk about the son that was hidden. Oh, and uh, talking about Hild, she mentioned um, Lindisfarne, or Lindisfarne, is it? I'm pretty sure that's the same place that Ragnar raided in season one of Vikings, because that's when he first met uh, Athelstan, right? Spoilers if you've not seen it. But I'm I'm sure of it, man, because I was only watching... Um, I was re-watching season one and season two of Vikings like just the other week. I'm sure of it, man, because like Lindisfarne is up in Northumbria and they're in Northumbria, so it would make sense, right? It's like some holy land or something. I'm going to have to like like double check and if I'm wrong, I'll just edit all this out, you know, but if I'm right, I'll leave it in. But <laughs> Hopefully now like Edward is outside, he's going to offer to be like a, like a bit of a weird like distraction so that Uhtred can get Finnan and, and Citric free and 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 just oh man um <laughs> I really don't want to sit here talking I, I want to just sit and watch it and and I'm gonna because I I want to just get this done man I can't believe we've come to the end now one more episode ago yes granted we got the movie but as far as the show the last kingdom this is it one more episode left <sighs> man um okay I'm going to go feed these two and we're going to uh, get into episode episode 10 next. But yeah, man, if you're interested in watching the movie, it should be up on my Patreon right now. The edited down version and also the full length if you want to watch the whole thing with me. Yeah, links are all down below. But for now, give this video a thumb up if you like it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't already, man. All right. I've been Sifurian and I'll catch you in the next one, man.